Hey guys, wanted to make a real quick video for what we consider to be not just for any price point, but basically the hands down best scooter in the world. Best e scooter, electric scooter in the world, whatever you want to call it. Now, I know that that's a pretty amazing claim to make. This is called the Hezo F8, for anybody who's familiar. But there's a couple secret weapons it has, in my opinion, even though it's $3,299, around a $3,300 range that actually makes it better than the other two top scooters in the world, in my opinion, which is the Roadrunner RX-7 and the Apollo X-Pro. Uh, they're both around that 4,000 to 5,000 range. So this is, you know, one to 2,000, about 1,500 to 2,000 cheaper. But I actually think it blows them away. Now, not including there's those SS weird ones from Korea. They're like $50,000, they go 200 miles an hour. That's more like a rocket ship. That's a whole different class. So I'm talking regular scooters that a normal person can afford. Most normal people aren't spending 50000 on their electric scooter. It's just not how it works. So for people that are in the you know 5000 and under market, let's say. So anyway, I have scooters, probably several now, that are 1000 1500 1800 2000 and I've been dreaming of this one for years because of basically the 16-inch wheels. That's the secret weapon. I'll just come out and say it. All scooters have wheels that are 12 inches, 11 inches, 13 inches. These are elite scooters. 11-inch tubeless, 12-inch tubeless, 13-inch tubeless. And, you know, the really fancy scooters that are 2,500, 3,000 on, on Amazon, whatever, you'll see them at like 13-inch tires. The bigger the better is sort of the theory because they're wider, they give you more grip, you can go over potholes better. These are 16 inch motorcycle tires. Just look at these things. I mean, compared to my scooter tires, even, you know, high end scooters, they look like toys next to this thing. I mean, look at that. And then even look at the, the shocks, the way it has the sort of inverted piston shock, but then it's also got this extra chamber here. Uh, just, you can see, look at the machining on the heavy right there. Even look at the bolts holding this on. Super heavy, heavy bolts here. Like a lot of the scooters, I'm always afraid they're going to crack right at this bend point, like as you're going over a hill or over a jump or a pothole or anything, a speed bump. Because right here is where they fold almost every electric scooter. This is another secret weapon. So the 16 inch wheels over 12 or 13 inch wheels. And also, all my other scooters fold right here. They crack here and fold like a V shape or a taco shape. That's cool for getting in the car, but this folds right here, so it actually goes pretty low once you fold the handlebars down. Same concept, it gets it in about half the space so you can move it in a, a SUV or pickup or usually like an SUV or station wagon or something. But anyway, the point is, look at how solid this is. I mean, I was worried about other ones breaking right as I went over a pothole. Look at this thing. That thing is like armored and welded and and it doesn't break there, so there's no weak point. Look at the way it comes up. Most of them just come right down from here to a single shock or double spring shock. Look at the way it's got the brace above it. Again, heavy duty, sort of extra caliber. I even have the F9, which for some reason the F9 is a model lower than the F8, I don't understand it. The lights seem similar. They're both a blue and red configuration, the same sort of heavy duty metal casing that are on the high end you know, lights. But for whatever reason, I think these are bigger, they get much brighter and go much further. I have extra lights on here, I don't even need them. That's how effective the lights right here are. And again, look at the size. Most of them coming up the side are small little, small little uh, actual pipes coming up the side. Look at the size of the thickness of this right here. It's just unbelievably amazing how the thickness and the quality, and then you've even got the full color LED display which a lot of them, you know, come with either smaller displays or black and white displays. You even got the hydraulic brakes there. You've got even this here. At first, I thought it, I would want more a twist throttle, but I've realized since on something like an electric bike, a twist throttle is better. On something like a scooter, this is better because this is really your gas. You have total control over it, and then it's nice and simple. Just one, two, three, get you through. It's so fast. I've never been able to go above two, but. You know, I just run it in the first gear because it's I'm not really going that fast. So, and then you've got all your controls here. You've got lights, turn signals, horn, the hydraulic brakes coming down, hydraulic brake cables, so you can stop with 
You've got 130 millimeter discs down here, which means your stopping power is almost instant. So it's basically one of the safest bikes you can get in that sense, or safest scooters you can get in that sense. And then the third secret weapon is really this double battery cage here, where it's got a 72 volt by 50 milliamp battery, which is an enormous battery. Somewhere around 100 kilometers of range before you run out of range, which is just amazing. And again, look at the reinforcement here on the back, where you've got double bolts here. You can really see that the, the, the way they've taken the time to sculpt the seat. Usually the first thing I do with an electric scooter, take the seat off, because they're all garbage. They're not very comfortable. But look at this one. This one is completely comfortable, completely uh, what you want. It's not too cushiony, but it's cushiony enough. It's firm. It's large, so you can find it when you're, you know, you're driving, basically. But then even the curve of this adds to its support. I actually hooked some Bluetooth speakers there, so it's got a stereo system. But then look, you've got heavy-duty gauge um, shocks on both sides, left and right. You've got this um, carbon fiber rear uh, fender here. That, you know, it's adjustable if you want to move it. And then again, this here, the engine is just incredible. It's a single engine, which I prefer because one engine, look, there's nothing in the front wheel, no engine. So with only one engine, you're actually better on battery power. And then <clears throat> even here, you've got the stainless steel case here inside that's holding the 50 amp battery. Again, 50 amp is huge. I have scooters that have 15 amp batteries, 20 amp batteries. 23 amp battery, 27 amp battery, 33 amp battery, and 38 amp batteries. And a 40 amp battery, but that's the F9. So this one here is an, is an even bigger size 50 amp. Also, all the other ones are either 48 volt, 52 volt, or 60 volt in terms of the controller getting the power through. This is a 72 volter with a 50 amp battery behind it. So it's really just all in all, these were originally selling for 5,500, then they went to 5,400, 5,300, then they went sub 5,000. So right now they have them on Amazon for $32.99. It's a really good deal. Uh, you can get them from Hezo.com or you can get them from Hezo's website on Amazon. But it's just really, it's not even the best scooter in a certain category or the best scooter this and that. It's literally the best scooter there is in the world right now, in my opinion. And it beats the uh, Roadrunner RX-7, which I've driven before, and is almost double the cost of this. So, just think about that. Again, the secret weapons, the giant battery, bigger than RX-7. The 16-inch wheels, which blow away the 11-inch Megoras on the RX-7. And just the heavy-duty capacity of the the way the, the frame is built with the bend up top and set it down bottom and the heavy duty frame forks. It's just an all around amazing scooter. And I plan on taking this. I'm right now at the Cape May Lewis Ferry here, a beautiful facility. The ferry's out. I was hoping to see it come in. But anyway, we'll be going into Cape May tomorrow to the sunken ship. So we're going to take a journey from out here to over there and should be able to get there and back with probably not too much of a dent on the battery. So we'll give you an update tomorrow. All right, peace.